Hello everybody, I am just going to make a very brief video here on how to create graphs for the Uniform Acceleration Lab using Excel. I think Excel is a lot more efficient at creating graphs uh, because you can put all the data into the spreadsheet and uh, let it do the work for you. So let me show you how to do this. So on my screen here, I have already populated a data data sheet with uh, the same columns that you have in your data sheet elapsed time altitude time interval or delta t the change in position during that time interval which is delta y and the average velocity during the time interval and this is populated with a generic object that's been dropped from rest at from an, starting at an altitude of 10,000 meters so in your lab you'll be working with real data for a human who has jumped from high altitude and so you'll have to get your own elapsed times and altitude numbers but once you have that you can get everything else so notice that from for elapsed time from zero to one the time interval is one second the elapsed time from one to two is also one second so you should have the same number going down here if you are having exact numbers for elapsed time like if it was going like very constant when you collect your own data it, you know it may not be as clean so your time intervals will uh, may not all have the same number however uh, when you calculate the rest of your data it, it, it should be fine so the change in position it should get larger and larger and uh, larger in value that is in magnitude notice that um, i've got negative numbers here and that's because we start with a high positive value and then well we're falling we're dropping to lower values of altitude so the change in position is going to be the final minus the initial and so i'll have a negative value which means my average velocity which is my change in position my displacement change in y divided by my time interval change in time is also going to be negative and in this case because i'm just dividing by one it looks like the same number it will be different units this is in meters and this is in meters per second negative is okay negative just means that the direction of the change in position is down and the velocity is also pointed down because in this case we're just choosing up to be positive and choosing down to be negative we could uh, go into excel if we wanted to just make it all positive we could just choose absolute value for this and uh, that would be fine but i'm not going to do that we're just going to leave these as negative and see what we can do with this so one of the things that you can do with uh, data in excel is graph it and i'm going to show you how to do this now i am using excel on a mac so i'm in um, i'm in os 10 this is on my imac your mileage may vary if you have a windows computer then it the, the options may in, be in different places but all versions of excel should be able to do the same thing all right, so I want to make a graph that shows the average velocity on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select elapsed time, and I'm selecting this with my mouse, and then I'm going to hold down my option key or command key in Windows. You might hold down the control key in order to do this. and that way I can only I'm just going to select these two columns and I don't select anything else in order uh, in order to make this happen and then I go up to insert and then I go over to charts charts are over in the middle here and even in a Windows computer you should see something like this now I'm going to choose the one down here it looks like it the tiny the tiny icon looks like an x and a y axis and it says x y scatter i click that and i'm going to choose the first one x y scatter and when i click that it will create a graph for me based on this data now check this out this is beautiful now because i have a generic object and i just use the actual physics equations i get really nice 
straight continuous data here <laughs> that is highly linear. And notice that I am uh, increasing my negative velocity by the exact same amount each second that goes by. But what's wrong with this graph? Um, I've got average, vo average velocity during time interval, and but I don't have any of my axes labeled. So what I'm going to do is if I go up to the top, I can go add chart element. And that allows me to choose axis titles. And I'm going to go primary horizontal and primary vertical. And that will allow me to put uh, axes on here. So this one is going to be time in seconds. Whoops. And then I'll go over here. And I will choose, uh, this is velocity in meters per second. All right, so now that I've labeled my axes. Now the numbers up here, um, it, it's choosing the lower value to, to show where the axis is, and I can change that. If I click on the axis, and I'm clicking Control, I can, or this is like a, a, a left click or a right click, if you're using a window, I'm sorry, a right click if you're using a Windows computer, and I'm gonna click on Format Axis. And when I format the axis, it gives me these options. And under Labels, I'm just gonna go Label Position, I'm gonna go put that under uh, Low, and it moves my numbers down to the lower number here. So now I've got my uh, time axis with my numbers down here. So this is, this is really nice. And this is showing me a really beautiful graph for average velocity during the time interval. Now how can I get the slope of this? Well, I can do that by using some of the options that are available to me in Excel. All right, so what I did was I right-clicked or control-clicked on Mac on my data, and I said create a trend line. And in, in Excel, that's basically going to be the uh, same thing as a best fit line, depending on, in this class, we're mainly going to deal with linear equations um, for uh, the kind of plots that we're doing. And so I have a trend line that's linear, and I'm going to say display equation on chart. And so now notice that my equation is displayed on my chart. And look at, I've got y equals, there's the slope, mx plus b. It looks like my y-intercept is at uh, 4.9. But what I'm really interested in is, is the slope of this equation. The slope of your velocity versus time graph is acceleration. And so you can see that my slope which is negative 9.8, is the value that I should be getting for my acceleration due to gravity, So, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. If we're choosing down to be negative, it'll be negative. If you're choosing down to be positive, it'll, it'll be positive, but it should be 9.8, and that's the number that you'll be comparing to. Now, what if we want to make a graph of the uh, position versus uh, position versus elapsed time. Well, that one's pretty easy. All I need to do is just select the two columns, and nicely, these are next to each other. And then I go over to Insert. I'm going to do the same thing, make a scatter plot, and I get this. Now, notice how it's all squashed in this one little uh, one little row right here, But and I'd like to expand this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, click on my horizontal axis, the numbers there. I'm going to control click or right click on that and go format axis. And when I format the axis, I'm going to change the minimum and the maximum. It looks like it goes from about 8,000 to 10,000. So my minimum, I'm going to make 8,000. And my maximum, I'm going to make 10,000. And that looks, uh, that looks pretty good for my uh, y-axis, I can also do that. It doesn't look like I need to go beyond 20, so I'm just going to go to 20 here. And notice how for our change in altitude or change in position, we have a, this is not a linear, this is, this is actually a quadratic. 
and quadratic um, a quadratic graph. And so uh, we're not going to have to worry about creating the equation for this or analyzing that, but you, you do need to know that as you're getting uh, faster and faster and faster with, with each time interval, the object will be able to go farther and farther and farther each time interval. And that's why we have a curved graph here and not just a straight graph. And so when you are doing your lab, this is how you can do some graphs. Um, I didn't do the labels on this one, but if you were making it, you would make the labels. All right, I hope this helps you to make some graphs and uh, good luck.